Hey, I'm Greg. I'm David, and we're with Malta Dynamics, and these are the five preferred methods of working at height. Falls from heights continue to be the number one killer, the number one violator, and the number one in fines in the construction industry. And we're going to give you these five things to help you decide what you need to do in what situation when working at heights. Number one is removing the fall hazard. The best way to protect workers at heights is to remove the hazard altogether. This can be achieved by performing work on ground level, then using material handling equipment to place materials at heights. Engineering controls to be used at ground level or using materials that require zero maintenance and inspection if possible. Number two is passive fall restraint. So in passive fall restraint, you're going to be using things such as guardrails, safety nets, barriers, barricades, fences, and things of that nature. This will not allow your worker to get to the edge. So you're not working in a full body harness or anything like that, but you're using barricades and netting to keep your worker from getting to the fall hazard itself. You save on the requirements for training as well. So if a person is not wearing a personal fall arrest system, then there's no reason to train them on that if it's that part of their everyday work. It's also important to note that in factories or permanent or semi-permanent facilities, this is always the one that they strive to achieve. Number three is active fall restraint. So like passive fall restraint, the worker is not in a situation where they could have a fall, but this time, instead of guardrails or other barriers, a person is wearing a personal fall arrest system, but it's tethered in a way where the worker does not have the ability to take a fall. During active fall restraint, a worker is still going to be attached to an anchor point. This anchor point is going to be rated for fall restraint. So it's not going to be rated to the standard 5,000 pound anchor point you find on all the job sites. So with that being said, OSHA's standard interpretation letter states that you can either use a 3,000 pound anchor point or an anchor point rated for two times the force expected that will not allow the worker to get to the edge. Now that we talked about the anchor points, a worker is still going to have a connector device. So this might be a vertical lifeline assembly. So with that, you would just adjust it so the worker can't get to an edge. Maybe a shorter self-retracting lifeline. So using a six foot self-retracting lifeline with an edge that's 10 to 12 feet away. So that means the worker cannot reach that edge due to the, the limiting factors of the connecting device. Number four is fall arrest. Fall arrest systems are designed to protect workers where a fall hazard does exist. The goal is to utilize equipment to minimize swing fall, free fall distances, and arresting forces to the body of the worker. During this, the worker is going to be attached to a PFAS, which is a personal fall arrest system. So this system is going to include an anchor point, your connecting device, which could be a self-retracting lifeline, a lanyard, a VLA, vertical lifeline assembly, and the body wear, which is going to be a full body harness. So in this situation where the worker can fall, when a fall occurs, all the components of the personal fall arrest system work together to arrest the fall and minimize the impact to the body of the worker. At that point, prompt rescue is required. Number five, controlled access zones and safety monitoring systems. Controlled access zones are where visual barriers represent a no-go area, preventing workers from accessing the fall hazard. This is a popular option on flat commercial roofs and oftentimes you'll see brightly colored ribbon with flags and barriers on top. That is a visual only barrier. It does not provide any fall protection other than an area that workers know that they cannot go. Oftentimes on a low slope roof, they might have a safety monitor on the roof. So the safety monitor is a competent person designated by the employer to understand the ins and outs of safety, especially height safety on the job site. That competent person monitors the hazard area and acts as an attendant for the zone. It's important to note that the controlled access zone and safety monitor options should always be used as a last resort. Although these are options available, OSHA is specific to mention that you must prove that it is infeasible for you to use these previously discussed options in this article. And for more resources from either OSHA or from Malta Dynamics, please click the link in the description.